We, we didn't start yet. We didn't start yet, Mayor, because Commissioner O'Connor's not on either. All right, thank you. Sorry about that, everyone. My uh, computer was not letting me log in. So fortunately, I'm at City Hall and I have our IT uh, individual here. Okay, so we're, we're just missing Commissioner O'Connor. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully he'll join us momentarily. Uh, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order again. My apologies for starting late. Uh, We'll start uh, this evening with a moment of silence and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance before we move on to roll call. Uh, so if you would join me for a moment of silence, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. All right, next, if you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, we will have roll call. So Commissioner O'Connor said he can't log on on any device. Huh, you know, I was, I was having an issue too, so I wonder. So let, let me do a roll call and then we'll go to, um, we'll get the public comment. I'll try to touch base with him. Oh. Joel, has somebody try to get him to call in? Yeah, I'll, let me do a roll call, then we'll get, oh, here he goes. I see him here. Let me put him over. Make him wait like I did Commissioner Lanier. All right, there we go. All right, roll call. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Ruppart. Here. Commissioner Moody. Present. Commissioner O'Connor. Commissioner Isasi. Here. Commissioner Lanier. Present. Mayor Bliss. Yes. Um, all right, next that'll take us to our uh, first opportunity for public comment. Uh, and I'm gonna introduce our translator in just a moment, but let me walk you through if you wanna be heard on any items tonight, kind of walk you through the agenda. So we have a pretty lengthy agenda because we had full uh, meetings this morning and all of our four standing committee meetings. So we'll have three opportunities for public comment tonight. The very first one is only related to items that we're actually voting on tonight, so agenda items. So if you wanna to speak to something that we're voting on uh, momentarily, you can call into uh, our line at 4563000 or 311, hit number one and then number one. We do have a scheduled public hearing tonight for a Brownfield plan amendment for Henry Avenue. If you wanna to speak to that item, I'm gonna ask you to hold off until we open that up for public comment. Um, and at that time, you'll be able to call either of those numbers again at hit number one and then number two. And then the last opportunity for public comment tonight will be about any other item. And uh, again, you call into 4563000 or 311, and you hit the number one and then number five. So first I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Lily Beth Perez. Uh, she will be providing translation services tonight if needed. Uh, and then we'll move on to public comment on agenda items. Thank you, Mayor Bliss. Good evening, everyone. If you need interpretation services to address the city commission, I will be able to assist. Please dial 456 3000 or 311 and choose the option you'd like to speak on tonight. Buenas tardes. Si necesita servicios de interpretación, estaré disponible para ayudarle. Marque el 4563000 o el 311 y elija la opción en la que desea comentar. Gracias. Thank you, Ms. Perez. All right, so if you want to speak on an uh, Agenda item that we're going to be voting on tonight. Now is an opportunity to call in. So I'll open up this first opportunity for public comment. A couple of our, uh, our, our expectations and guidelines related to public comment. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in. In this first opportunity for public comment, we ask that you specifically say what item you're speaking to. So if it's an appointments committee number two or um, community development committee number three, please let us know what item you're talking about. Uh, we'll give you up to three minutes to speak. And then um, we also ask that you are respectful of our rules related to language. So we ask that you not use any derogatory comments or curse words. Uh, so Daniel, are there any, is there anyone in the queue who wants to be heard on a agenda item that we're voting on tonight? There is, yes. <clears throat> Here they come. Hello, 
caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name, the city in which you live, and the agenda item you wish to speak on. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Uh, good evening, uh, city commissioners. My name is Paul Weisberger. I live in Birmingham, Michigan. I'm one of the owners of Green Buddha. Uh, goes by the name Green Buddha Cannabis Company. I'm speaking on the agenda item 9E6 in your consent agenda, formerly D7. Um, we also included a memorandum that's found in 7.8 of your packet. Um, it's an August 21st um, memorandum, which we set forth our position on why we are in full support and to with the planning director's recommendation to adopt the resolution contained within 9D6. Um, we, without going, because you've had a long day, without going to any great detail on our memo, I, I hope you've read it. Um, we do feel that it's the uh, fair, fair, equitable thing to do to allow for the fast track process to occur for the seven provisional centers that we're able to obtain a sensitivity waiver, um, allow them to obtain the same waiver for recreational. Um, we are months like, into this project. Um, we have been there from the beginning. We submitted. We were fortunate enough to obtain the points needed to be able to go in front of the planning commission for a special land use in which we did appear. Um, we went through all of the normal review and questioning as it relates to security, landscaping, parking, operation, compatibility with surrounding areas. And we were found uh, as being worthy to be approved for that. We'd like to continue this process and also apply for recreational so that we're not at a significant disadvantage with our surrounding um, marijuana facilities. And we are respectfully requesting that you follow the recommendation of the plan director and move uh, for a public hearing on the subject matter in question. Again, thank you for your time and I will uh, sign off now. Thank you, Colin. <clears throat> Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live and the agenda item you wish to speak upon. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Good afternoon, city commissioners. Uh, my name is Kevin Chain. I re reside in Gross Point Wood, Michigan. Um, I'm calling in regards to uh, section agenda item number nine. Uh, D6, uh, similar to the previous caller, um, I'm voicing my support in the adoption of the Planning Commission's recommendation to allow the current handful of uh, established land use medical marijuana provision centers with uh, waiver approvals to transfer their waiver to their uh, recreational marijuana application for Planning Commission uh, consideration. Uh, I personally believe this is a necessary move uh, that's able to provide a fair and competitive marketplace. Uh, many of these existing provision centers have invested thousands of dollars into purchasing, leasing, real estate, and building out their facilities. Uh, the city currently under their medical marijuana ordinance has a mechanism in place for these applicants uh, to obtain uh, waivers from these sensitive uses. And these handful of provision center owners have already gone through planning commission hearings. Um, they work with city staff. They've obtained waivers through this mechanism, um, knowing that uh, I strongly believe that allowing these existing provision centers that have already received special land use, uh, gone through that process before planning commission and uh, and obtained that waiver approval from these sensitive uses be given the opportunity to also apply for a waiver um, with their recreational permit. And um, you know it, it, it wouldn't be an overly burdensome um, process for the city since the uh, medical ordinance already has a uh, uh, mechanism in place which the rec recreational ordinance can uh, follow. So uh, I humbly ask that the city commission uh, consider and adopt the planning director's recommendation under this uh, agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name, the city in which you live, and the agenda item you wish to speak on. Your time starts now. Good evening. My name is Samer Paulus. Uh, my address is 1100 West Maple Road, Troy, Michigan. The agenda item I'm speaking on is uh, regarding the proposed uh, ordinance amendment to allow provisioning centers with current sensitive land use zoning waivers to transfer those waivers over to the recreational process. 
Um, I just wanted to call and say that I'm in full support of the planning director's recommendation. Um, I think that not allowing current provisioning centers with these land use waivers to become recreationally licensed would be number one, very detrimental to their business, and number two, would be totally excluding them from the market. So I, uh, I hope you guys consider that uh, amendment, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Hello, my name is uh, Robert Lonke. I am uh, I reside in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Tonight, I'm calling from Novi, Michigan. Um, I'm calling regarding uh, Section C, Item 11 for the vehicle exhaust systems for the 11 fire stations in Grand Rapids. Um, I just run up really tonight wanted to thank everybody for the opportunity to be a part of the vehicle exhaust project for Grand Rapids. Myself and uh, Phil Long from Michigan Air Products were able to visit all the stations with Dustin recently. We enjoyed meeting everyone and getting a better picture of just what each station needs for the project. And we look forward to adding Grand Rapids to our rapidly growing list of Metterman vehicle exhaust systems in Michigan. And once again, just uh, thank you for your time and your consideration. Have a great evening. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Thank you. You have three minutes. Please state your name, the city in which you live, and the agenda item you wish to speak on. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Yeah, sorry, is that me now? Yes. <laughs> you have three Excellent. minutes. Thank you. Sorry about that. My name is Barney Goldstein. I am a resident of Ann Arbor, Michigan, and like the uh, previous, we're calling in support of uh, agenda item 96 to allow the uh, uh, zoning first for sensitive uses to transfer from uh, medical marijuana facilities to recreational marijuana facilities. Uh, I think all of the prior callers have, have done a very nice job of summarizing the arguments in favor of this. Uh, and I think we'll just simply echo that the economics of the industry as it's developing are such that um, uh, precluding people from partaking in the recreational side of the industry would most likely uh, be fatal to a lot of these businesses that had otherwise uh, complied with, with everything that uh, the city had asked so far. So yeah, for, uh, for those reasons, we, we, we just want to also echo our support for 96. And uh, that'll be all. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? My name is Josh Colton. I'm an attorney from Ann Arbor, Michigan, representing Greenstone, Michigan, LLC. I'm calling in regards to agenda item number, like the previous caller, 96, in regards to the uh, proposed amendment of the ordinance in regards to the ability to transfer waivers for sensitive uses as it applies to current medical uh, facilities approved for special use into their recreational facilities. Um, I believe that the previous callers have covered the majority of what I wanted to speak on. I'm in full support as well of the planning director's recommendation. Uh, the only item I'd like to add is that within the ordinance for the medical marijuana facilities that both my company and these other companies applied underneath, it specifically says in the first paragraph under the purpose is that the intent of these provisions is to ensure that, and I paraphrase, is to ensure that the quality or that commercial retail viability and variety is enhanced and encouraged. Uh, when my company, I can speak on my behalf, and I'm sure these other companies may feel similarly. When we came into this, we certainly had no expectation of a guarantee of a retail license, but we entered with the intent that we believed we would be able to compete on an even playing field with the other um, businesses applying for those licenses. And we feel that not being afforded the opportunity to participate in the retail market will create a serious detriment for our business's viability moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, caller. There are no more callers, Mayor. Thank you, Daniel. 
All right, next that will take us to approval of minutes. And this is from our August 11th meeting. Commissioners, can I get a motion? Come on. All right, moved. All right, moved and supported. Commissioners, any questions, comments, uh, additions, changes? All right, seeing none, I'll ask our city clerk to call the vote. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, next that will take us to petitions and communications. First one is a communication received from William Sleeman regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department. That is received and filed. Communication received from Greg A. Mackey regarding the recommendation from the Planning Commission to allow approved medical marijuana waivers to be applicable for adult use applications. That's received and filed. Communication received from Yolanda Howe asking that proof reports be saved for the evening meeting. That's received and filed. Communication received from the Reverend Kenneth W. Hoskins regarding the development conversation taking place surrounding the Boston Square neighborhood. That's received and filed. Communication received from Sarah DePoy expressing opposition to the Boston Square proposal. That's received and filed. Um, communication received from the Plaza Roosevelt Network expressing support for the truck route ordinance. That's received and filed. Communication received from the Roosevelt Park Neighborhood Association expressing support for the truck route ordinance. That's received and filed. Communication received from Green Buddha Cannabis Company regarding recreational marijuana zoning waivers. That's received and filed. Communication received from Ryan Walkus, Executive Director of Bridge Street Ministries, urging the City Commission to add youth centers as a sensitive land use to the proposed marijuana ordinance. That's received and filed. Communication received from Christy Netch, Executive Director of New City Kids, Grand Rapids, asking the Commission to consider adding youth centers to the proposed recreational marijuana zoning amendment. That's received and filed. Communication received from Brian and Erica Venny asking the City Commission to add youth centers as a sensitive land use to propose marijuana ordinance. And that is also received and filed. All right, Commissioners, next up is reports of city officers, and we have two items tonight. The first one is Comptroller's report for the period of July 30, 2020 through August 12, 2020, in the amount of $36,808,339.25. That is received and filed. And Treasurer's report for the period of July 28, 2020 through August 10, 2020. That is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda and reports of standing committees. So those are items that are, uh, the items that are on consent are items that we talked about earlier in one of our standing committee meetings and they were voted on unanimously. So tonight with one voice vote, we'll adopt those items. Commissioners, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. All right, moved and supported. Commissioners, anything to add or questions? We've had a full day together. All right, see, see none, I'll turn to our city. Oh, Commissioner Moody, did you have a, a question or comment about the consent agenda? Yeah, for some reason, everybody went blank, so I didn't hear the vote at all. Well, um, we, haven't, we haven't voted yet, so okay. you're in good shape. Uh, I was just saying to our city clerk right now to call the vote on the consent agenda. So. I, I, I do want to make a, a amend one of the. Um, oh, hold, uh, Commissioner Moody, that that item was taken off consent, so we'll get we'll go to it next. Okay, great. Um, Commissioner Asasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes, it carries. Uh, and as our city clerk said, we do have one item that has been removed from consent uh, because this morning we had made a motion to amend that. So I'm going to go ahead and call that up so that we can have additional conversation about it tonight because I know some um, conversations happen this afternoon and follow up to our committee of the whole discussion this morning. So um, this is a resolution approving acquisition of uh, six tax foreclosure properties from the Kent County Treasurer, approving the subsequent conveyance to the State Land Bank Authority. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support. All okay, right, moved and supported. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Moody, I'll turn this over to you. Yes, Madam Mayor, what I would like to do is I I, I move to amend the resolution uh, 
Um, by adding this partial, which is located at 546 Neyland, back onto uh, the approved list of properties to be forwarded to the city, to the Michigan State Land Bank. Okay. So, commissioners, I have a motion to revert this um, back to the original resolution that was brought forward this morning by adding in the Neyland property. Is there support for that amendment? Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioners, uh, any questions about that or anything to add? I think there, there was a occurred this afternoon where a number of questions that um, some of us had related to this item were. Uh, so I'll just see if there's any. Mayor, we have some, Mayor, there's some additional staff information that we uh, have discovered and shared with the commissioners. I'm having a hard time hearing uh, folks. If, if you're not on mute, uh, could you put your mic on mute? There, there's additional staff information. The, the city attorney's office and members from the economic development uh, department confirmed that uh, if the item was pulled uh, from the list of land bank properties, we would likely not have the ability to add it back to the list or dispose of it in the future because uh, there is a scheduled auction of the county on September the 11th, and I believe the city attorney confirm that with the uh, county's office uh, along with other staff. City Attorney, is that correct? That's correct, City Manager. Okay. So, uh, Commissioner Linear, did you did you have a question or a comment? I know uh, this was a concern that you brought up this morning. You had some more information and questions you wanted answered before moving forward. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, for asking um, the city manager pretty much alluded to um, the subsequent conversations that we've had since this morning, which included just trying to understand what transpired and what, what options existed. And the options were quite limited. Um, one of them was to um, continue with the amendment that we had made, which would result in the property being um, auctioned um, on the 11th. And the other is um, continuing forward with the acquisition, the city acquisition, and then turning them over to the state land bank. And um, I know um, Pastor Commissioner Moody um, had conversations with others, and um, I am, um, you know, he and I have been in contact regarding bringing them back into, um, into the um, uh, resolution that included the other six. And, um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm comfortable with as much information that I've been able to garner um, in this short period of time. Thank you for following up. Thank you, Commissioner Lanier. I, I thought earlier that we had an opportunity to talk with the individual uh, about the situation, but at the same time had an opportunity to bring this back this evening. That's why I was moving to amend the resolution to put it back. Maybe I misunderstood, but I thought we had that opportunity to do that. Yep, that's that's what we're going to vote on momentarily, Commissioner. So I just want to say thank you to both of you and everyone else who worked this afternoon to answer the questions and, and resolve any outstanding concerns that um, anyone around this table had. So what's before us tonight, uh, the motion that Commissioner Moody made was to amend um, what's before us to add back in the Neyland property, which takes us back to the original um, resolution that was in our packet leading up to Committee of the Whole this morning. So can I get, um, see if there's any other questions on that, and then I'll have uh, our city clerk call the question. Commissioner Lanier? Yeah, I, uh, I see Mr. Klooster, um on screen, and so I didn't know if he had anything to add um, as the staff liaison to this work, but didn't want that to be missing before the vote, um, Mayor, if you don't mind. Thank you, Commissioner Lanier. I was just uh, adding myself to the screen to make sure you all knew I was here and was available to answer questions. But I think <clears throat> you summarized it correctly that there are really two outcomes here. One is the auction um, and the other is uh, the city acquiring it and facilitating projects with our nonprofit partners. Thank you, Mr. Kluster. All right, with that then, I'll turn to our city clerk to um, call for the vote. So the vote on the amendment, Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? 
Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Mayor Blitz. Yes. So now we have the amended uh, resolution before us. So can I get, uh, do I have to call another motion on that? No, nope, the motion's already on the floor. Okay. So um, any additional conversations about the amended resolution? Questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and call that vote then. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Aye, aye. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, commissioners, next that will take us to ordinances to be adopted, and we have four ordinances before us tonight, and we'll start with the first one. First one is an ordinance amending section one of the budget ordinance 2020-15 for fiscal year 2021, amendment number four. So moved. Four. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor from our fiscal committee, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we just have three items on here tonight. Uh, uh, one is for the planning department. It's a request uh, for a, an administrative analyst. Uh, two, uh, it's just changing the scope a little bit of, uh, you know, we had a, a vacancy in the department. Um, one of the folks was uh, handled a lot of our cannabis, um, medical mar marijuana related issues. And so it's to bring on another position for that. Uh, we're receiving uh, a grant for some uh, additional lead hazard stuff, which is uh, certainly a priority of the city. And uh, we're also adding someone in the uh, community development department uh, who will uh, be the homelessness coordinator to work with our homeless outreach team, as well as a variety of our nonprofit partners in helping to address the, uh, the concerns and, and issues related to homelessness in our community. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and ask our city clerk, city clerk to call the vote. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Estasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Aye. Mayor Bliss. Yes. And can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? So moved. So moved. Support. Support. All right. Moved and supported. City Clerk, can you call the vote? Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Aye. Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, Commissioners, next that will take us to our second ordinance to be adopted tonight. It's a consideration of an ordinance rezoning 1150 Adams Street Southeast, 1435, 1451 Fuller Avenue Southeast, 1428, 1432, 1436, 1440, 1444, 1448, 1460, 1480, 1480, and 1500 Kalamazoo Avenue Southeast to SD PRD, which is a special district's planned redevelopment district to facilitate a mixed use development. Great. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support. All right. Sure. Moved and supported. Commissioner Jones, you want to tell us about this? Yes, Mayor. On uh, the 21st of July, the City Commission established uh, today, the 25th of August, as the date to consider an ordinance rezoning uh, said addresses uh, to or properties to facilitate a mixed use commercial and affordable housing development. Associated with the rezoning are a site condominium and preliminary successful site plan with each phase returning to the Planning Commission for final site plan review approval. Uh, we held a public hearing on the matter on August 11th, at which time several people spoke in favor of the project and expressed support for the addition of new affordable housing opportunities, economic opportunities, engagement, and appreciation for the terms of the community partnership agreement. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I see Ms. Turkelson has joined us in case we have any, any questions, uh, but I'll open it up first for commissioners. Uh, any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll turn to our city clerk to call for the vote. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Aye, too. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes, it carries. 
All right. I'll add my thanks again to everyone who worked so hard on this project, as well as Ms. Turkelson for her work. Uh, next, that will take us to our third ordinance to be adopted tonight. Yes, that is a consideration of a major amendment to a planned redevelopment district at 3900 and 3911 Peninsular Drive Southeast. All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support. All right. Moved and supported. Commissioner Rappert, you want to tell us about this? Yes, Mayor, this is a, uh, a large property uh, at west of East Paris along the north of 28th Street. And there's already a large development there, but they're going to add 214 parking spots along with a walking bridge across uh, some sort of a lake. Um, so a uh, pretty significant parking lot to support a very big uh, business, that a 24-hour call center. So I think that's it. Just all right. Adding, adding to something that we approved before. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Pretty straightforward. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments about this item? All right. Seeing none, I'll turn to our city clerk. Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Lepart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, next that will take us to our fourth ordinance to be adopted tonight. That's an ordinance amending section 10-36 truck routes of Article 3, Chapter 181, Title 10 of the Code of the City of Grand Rapids. So moved. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner Assas, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is an amendment to the truck routes in our city. So we held a public hearing on August 11th. Um, these have not been updated since 1981, one year after I was born. A <laughs> little humor for tonight. And um, this is supported by Mobile GR and the and Vital Streets Oversight Committee. Thank you, Commissioner. I see uh, Mr. Nearmore has joined us in case we do have any questions. I know we had a public hearing. We have heard quite a bit of feedback, um, especially from folks in certain neighborhoods in support of this item. Uh, but I'll open it up, Commissioners, if you have questions or comments. All right. Seeing none, I'll turn to our city clerk. Commissioner Ruppart. Commissioner Lanier. Aye. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Six, next that will take us to our scheduled public hearing, and we have one scheduled public hearing tonight. And this is a public hearing to consider a Brownfield Plan Amendment for Henry Avenue LLC for a project located at 341 Henry Avenue Southeast. Um, so the purpose of this uh, public hearing is to consider the approval uh, and notice of this hearing has been made in, in writing pursuant to state law. Um, so with that, we'll start with opening this up for Mr. Gracia uh, to give us a little bit of background on this item. And then uh, Mr. Gracia, do we have guests with us tonight as well? Who We do. Okay. We do, Mayor. Mayor we have uh, Mitch, Di Mitch Dimstra and JC uh, Eamon from um, Metric Structures that will uh, are available to answer any questions um, after I give a brief overview of the project. Great. All right. Yeah. I'll, turn it, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. So um, good, after, good evening, Commissioners. So uh, what's before you is a uh, Brownfield Plan Amendment for 10 residential apartment units at um, 314 Henry related um, for these projects would include the demolition of one vacant single home in order to construct three buildings with those 10 residential apartments. Total estimated investment in the project is approximately $2.6 million with hard construction costs of approximately $1.8 million. The Brownfield Amendment uh, is um, asking is uh, for the developer to seek reimbursement for Brownfield eligible activities totaling $430,000 including the cost of environmental site assessments and other activities related to lead and asbestos abatement, demolition, site preparation, and other public and private infrastructure improvements. The so reimbursement will occur over a 13-year period with an additional five years of capture for the local brownfield revolving, loan, revolving fund 
and the project is expected to be completed in um, spring time of 2021. And at this time, I will turn it over to uh, invite the developers to ask, answer any questions or provide additional information. Thank you, Mr. Gracia. Uh, are there oh, I, I, I see Ms. Amon on. I yes. haven't seen Mr. Damster on. Uh, JC's fine. Okay. I think, I think she's on. Hi, JC. I think you're muted, JC. Okay. There you go. Hi, everybody. Um, I know you've heard from me on this project a couple of times now, um, so I'll just do a quick recap um, and address some concerns that I know have come up um, with the commission. Um, and so this project is um, an incremental increase in density from what was there historically. Um, there were two single family residences um, there at some point in time between um, now and when the structures were developed in probably the early 1900s. Um, the structure that was on the 337 Henry lot has since been demolished with approval from the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, we are through all of our approvals with the city and the permits are actually currently um, in the plan review process. Um, and uh, the Brownfield um, plan that we have put forth in front of you guys is really for um, infrastructure improvements that are necessary to bring this development to fruition. Um, and part of that is um, stormwater um, detention on site. Um, there is no stormwater infrastructure in Donovan Court or in Henry Avenue. So a high amount of cost is being incurred for this development to move forward, um, to be able to maintain um, and handle the stormwater um, that will run through the site, as well as um, sidewalks and walkways and the right of way. Um, all of that will be improved and the street frontage as well. Um, we are putting in a sidewalk along Donovan and that will be activated and open to the public, um, which does not exist currently. Um, and this project will um, provide 10 new units to an area that we um, are all aware is um, very crowded currently. So um, as per the new study that just came out um, from Ryan Kilpatrick and housing, um, housing Now, um, or housing next, um, and as well with the um, the um, research that's been done about the demand for units and affordable um, style units and the AMI here in Grand Rapids. Um, this project does have um, units that will fall under the demanded category in that 80 to 100 percent, as well as that 120 percent AMI, um, creating more. Um, market rate housing um, that is in high demand right now per the research. Great, thank you for that additional information. Uh, commissioners, any questions before I open it up for public comment? Okay, seeing none. So um, if you are interested in speaking on this proposal, you can call 466-3000 or 311 and hit number one and then hit number two. So I'll turn to Daniel to see if we have anyone in the queue. There are currently no callers in the queue for this item. Okay. All right. We'll just give it another moment uh, before I close that public comment period. All right. Still no one in the queue, Daniel? Correct. Okay. I'll go ahead and close that public comment period and we'll refer this back to Committee of the Whole. All right. That will take us to our last opportunity for public comment tonight. And this is public comment and any other item. Uh, again, you can call 456-3000 or 311 and hit number one and then number five. Uh, so, Daniel, do we have anyone in the queue? Yes, here they come. Okay, thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Eric Kleinfelter. I'm an engineer from Grand Rapids, Third Ward. Uh, First, I'd like to compliment the GRPD on their uh, communication policies and for uh, seeking community input about their uh, recent strategic plan. Uh, that being said, one major issue that I'm not seeing addressed is specific updates to their use of force policy. Uh, and their policy under deadly force application is 
states that police officers may apply deadly force against a reasonable threat of death or serious bodily injury. Uh, this, this is wrong in my opinion. Officers should only use deadly force to protect against threat of death. Uh, if a suspected criminal has no weapon but lays a hand on an officer, uh, this should be a felony crime, of course, uh, but it should not be able to result in a suspect's death. Uh, the policy also states that deadly force may be used uh, to prevent the escape of a subject who is fleeing from a violent felony crime. <clears throat> Uh, if suspect is fleeing and the officers are unable to apprehend them, uh, they should hold back and consult detectives, in, in my opinion. Um, they should be prohibited from using deadly force on a subject that is already fleeing. Um, the policy also states that officers may draw and display weapons when there is fear for the safety of the officers or others. Uh, this is wrong because it is completely subjective. Each officer may have different levels of action, which could result in fear. Uh, there must be specific actions that are required, uh, such as only in the event that a gun is present, may the officers draw a firearm. Basing a policy on subjective human emotions, such as fear, is sort of ridiculous. Um, in general, the use of force policies, as they stand now, uh, they move physical risk away from officers and onto alleged suspects. Uh, this is wrong because police officers have chosen to serve their community and to accept risk associated with their position. Uh, citizens should not have to accept the risk of injury or death based on an officer's subjective emotion of fear. Uh, thank you for listening, and I yield my time. Thank you, caller. Mayor, there are no more callers in the queue. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I'll go ahead and close that opportunity for public comment, and I will turn to my colleagues on the commission. Uh, let's start tonight with uh, Commissioner Moody. None, Mayor. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor? Uh, no comment, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lanier? I think we're all speechless, Mayor. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Asasi? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, just the one thing that I wanted to share with people, uh, we've gotten some feedback myself and, and Task Commissioner Kelly, really people asking us about how we are going to be prepared for the upcoming election in November. And so I'd just like to share with all of you and those who are watching um, that many of us have been part of these conversations even prior to the primary day and certainly prior to me being on the commission. Um, but the city clerk and I had a, had a good check in today about the communications that um, you know individuals be seen. There was a communication last week talking about um, some of the process and how people can apply for the ballot, their absentee ballot. Uh, we gave an update about um, pre precincts that are being moved due to COVID. And so I really want to share with individuals that are watching that we are very mindful of this and we are working diligently to make sure that everyone's vote, um, that uh, it will be protected. And um, so more to come on that, but I just want to um, want to say that and remind people that are watching that it's, um, you, you can go ahead and do that. And then if you did apply prior to the primary, if you selected both the primary and November ballots, you do not have to do that again, correct, City Clerk? I've got a question from last week. Um, so just really making sure that uh, people are going to, if they decide to go in person, that we are having a lot of protocols in place so it's safe and uh, making sure that um, we also need volunteers. So we especially need Spanish speaking volunteers. So if you're watching and you want to, to sign up, I know I'm not Trevor Noah like last time and Trevor Noah got some people to sign up, but we do need um, election workers as well. As well. So um, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Repper? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I uh, I got to make up for last week. So I, I just have a couple of things to celebrate. We, we, we approved some exciting stuff tonight. First of all, the 
the Laker line opened up um, yesterday. They launched, and what an incredible seventy plus million dollar investment in our city to make transit more accessible and speedy. Um, I tried to take it to City Hall this morning, but it, it's not quite running on schedule yet because the university is not back uh, in the same way. Um, we approved four major improvements to three three First Ward parks and Amon Park, which is one of my favorite parks in the city. I really am excited about this homeless coordinator position that we're um, that we approved at this tonight and it's fiscal this morning because. Uh, the hot team is doing great work. We got an update from them at public safety and this, this individual is going to just help tie it all together and help us to build our own city strategy for how to address homelessness, which I'm very excited about. Uh, the new South division fire station, we've been talking about that for two plus years and that purchase was finished today. Uh, and I really, I'm excited about our land bank agreement with the state of Michigan and, and, and making these 60 properties, these vacant buildable properties available for affordable housing and for some new creative, innovative ways, as well as adding seven more to the roles uh, that can be used, including, you know, one, some, a couple commercial properties that are of, of great interest. Um, and then last, you know, we heard from the as public safety today, the police department and the office of public oversight and accountability their plans are out. We need to have feedback. And so if you have a chance to do that, please uh, log into the city's website and give that feedback. The also, also, we just released our welcome plan, which uh, some of us have been working on for some years uh, for feedback. So that'll be open for feedback for the next month as well. I don't know that I'll post it on my my site, but um, uh, that'll get posted in the near future, too. And we're looking for feedback on that that welcome plan for the city of Grand Rapids to welcome new Americans to, to be a welcoming place for new Americans in our economy. So I think that's a great day of work. Thank you all. And I'm also um, pleased that it's only 7.50 and we're, we're wrapping up. <laughs> I uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Rappart. There are a lot of good things happening. So I appreciate you highlighting those. Uh, and Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I want to... Uh, recognize and um, thank uh, Mr. Brendan Davis and his presentation on this morning with the uh, draft strategic plan for uh, the OPA. Um, <clears throat> it was, uh, I think, rather strategic uh, in terms of everything from his um, objectives to the understanding that it uh, is something that um, should and could work very well in hand or alongside uh, the work that's being put forth by our chief. And so I'm very encouraged by their work uh, they've, uh, they've put forward thus far. I also want to recognize, again, uh, Commissioners Moody and Lanier uh, for their work and their advocacy um, in the, uh, the work of, uh, or in the project of Amplify uh, over in the Boston Square area, uh, their continued advocacy for uh, greater opportunities around ownership and uh, in terms of home ownership, as well as business ownership um, in that area, and really speaking up for, speaking on behalf and up for uh, marginalized communities, uh, populations rather in those neighborhoods, I wanna recognize them. Also wanna recognize the work of city staff uh, in that work as well. Uh, that has been um, a rather significant work uh, that was complex, um, and yet it has the potential to be uh, not only a model, but uh, could very much could, could very well put a significant uh, play a significant role in in the uh, in, in responding to the housing needs that we have here in our city. So I want to recognize uh, again Commissioner Moody and Lanier, as well as city staff. Also want to recognize and um, bid farewell to uh, Christian Rewa, uh, who is uh, going to be uh, departing uh, the city attorney's office, uh, the law department. Want to wish her the best and uh, thank her for her service uh, with the city. And I think that is it, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, city Attorney, any comments? No, Mayor, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, our City Clerk? Well, I wasn't going to, but Commissioner Sassi primed the pump on that one, so. Um, Yes, we are 
We're anxiously getting ready for um, obviously November election. Um, so for the August election, we mailed out 35,000 absentee ballots. Since then, um, with people that requested November only ballots and um, other applications that are coming in, we're up to 4,000 um, applications for the November election so far. So that's, that's where we're at. Um, so I just want voters to know, and we'll continue putting up the, the, this message, voting by mail, returning your ballot by mail is safe. Voting in person on election day will be safe. Dropping a ballot in a drop box will be safe. Um, we, what we saw in August um, with the mail service in Grand Rapids was a very good partnership between us and the uh, Grand Rapids Postmaster and the Grand Rapids um, post office. I think they did a good job with their carriers of really looking out for absentee ballots. And I don't see that to uh, change in November as well. So um, remember all elections are local. So even though there's national dialogues and stuff, um, know your clerk's office and others in the community are working on a local um, process. So thank you today for um, approving those two changes, to make um, those polling places safe for um, the communities where we used to have polling locations. Um, and we'll be doing um, notices out to all those voters. And then also we'll be, we're always working with the neighborhood associations to get out that message as well. So thank you. Thank you, city clerk. Uh, city manager. Thank you, mayor. And I, I too wanna thank the uh, commission for all the work that was done today as well as city staff for uh, preparing for this day. There's a lot of, uh, as you've heard today, a lot of things that we've gotten done from the conversations around oversight to uh, housing um, development, both with uh, the redevelopment project in the third ward as well as the land bank, but also um, the acknowledgement of uh, equity and um, freedom with our Juneteenth Freedom Festival uh, city co-sponsorship. I want to appreciate the staff and our community members for bringing that forward, as well as uh, our continued effort for recovery uh, in coming out of the, uh, or working through the recession rather, with another social district permit application. Um, and also just uh, heard a, a little bit about the added effort with the homeless coordination uh, with, uh, with the position that was approved, but also we approved some contracts with uh, Next Steps and Sequel Town to assist in keeping our community clean. And so finally, I, I do want to um, remind uh, the public that um, the city has been working in partnership with um, DGRI as well as uh, Experience Grand Rapids in, to uh, develop the Beta Bridge event that will assist in uh, economic recovery. Uh, that event is planned from August 28th to October the 3rd. There will be a series of events to include music, art, culture, uh, and different ways for our community to engage uh, and become more socially aware, but do it in a manner in which we will be mindful of uh, physical distancing and that will be the appropriate PPE and the other COVID-19 protocols. So there are about 37 events that are planned. This is the, the first major festival that we've had since COVID. And I hope that uh, we've seen other parts of the state um, reopen very safely. And so I hope the community will come out and safely partake in these events. And if you need more information, please go visit uh, thebridgegr.com. Thebridgegr.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, city manager. Um, so I won't repeat what anyone said tonight. I'll just add on um, two items. Uh, today is a, is a great day as uh, students start to uh, go back to school. Some, not all. I know these are this is a precarious time for a lot of families because of the pandemic. Um, but one cohort of students I want to uh, recognize tonight are the Promise Scholarship Zone recipients who are starting at GRCC. Um, several hundred of them, um, the very first cohort. So as a community, uh, we have a lot to be proud of that we've created this opportunity for young people in our city. And then last, I'm gonna ask all of you uh, around this table, but also the community to help us over the next five and a half weeks, get the count in for the census. Uh, initially, we had hoped that we were gonna have some additional time to, to complete the count. Uh, we thought we'd have till the end of October, that is currently not the case. We only have until the end of, of September. 
And at this point, we have about a 70% response rate. So we have a ways to go to get to a full count, which all of us know impacts funding, both from the state level and federal level, as well as our elected representation. Um, so if all of you can join me and, and others in reminding people to go online or take their census form and complete that, um, that would be a great thing, not just for our community, but really for all of West Michigan. Uh, so with that, I will call this meeting to a close and wish you all a wonderful and relaxing night. Thanks.